Hey everybody, and welcome to another Cricut Craft video. Today's video is super exciting, and I can't wait to show you guys all about it, and I'm so happy you're here to join me for this. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. I put out new videos on Wednesdays and Saturdays at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I am super excited for this video because this is a new product from Cricut. We got the Cricut Mug Press. So because we got that Cricut Mud Press from them, I wanted to do a review and a comparison between a Cricut Mud Press and a Mud Press that I got off of Amazon. I got both of these this week. I have not used either one until this video, and I purchased both with my own money. Neither company is paying me for this review. I paid for everything, including the mugs, including all the sublimation, all the infusible ink. Everything was paid for by me out of my own pocket. You'll see a lot of other people doing reviews, and one thing I want to caution you is that if you're watching somebody do a review, it's really important to look and see were they provided the products, were they paid for their review. That can sometimes sway an opinion one way or the other, even if they don't necessarily mean it to. You want to please the company that's paying you, so you're probably going to give them a good review, even if you don't necessarily mean to do so. So keep that in mind when looking at different reviews. Getting a 100% unbiased, honest review for me is always important and I want to make sure that I share with you guys all my thoughts, all my feelings, and all my true things that I feel about these machines. That way you guys can really understand some of the pros and cons of both machines. They both have their place in the world, so let's get started. We're going to go ahead and start pressing. We're going to use infusible ink and sublimation. I'm going to link everything that I used down below for you guys. That way you can check out and see if you like any of those products. There's everything down below. I'll have all the sublimation stuff I used, the infusible ink, both of the presses, and the mugs all linked for you guys. So you can check them out and make a decision for yourself as to if you want to purchase one of these, purchase the mugs, and get started with either sublimation or continue using infusible ink. Now let me know in those comments down below if you've tried infusible ink or sublimation, and if you have, which one do you like better? Is there a reason you like one more than the other, or are they kind of the same to you? Let's get started. We're going to start pressing, and I can't wait to show you guys all the fun things that these presses do. So the first one we're going to unbox is our Cricut Mug Press. Again, just to reiterate, I did pay for these by myself. Nobody sent these to me. These were not provided to me in any way, shape, or form. I'm not paid for my review. Nothing like that. I have no compensation from this video from Cricut or the other company with the Mug Press or any of the stores at which you can purchase these. So uh, it is in a cute little box. Um, I did check the weight with all the packaging is about nine pounds. I thought that was kind of interesting compared to the other one that is almost 15 pounds, but we'll see. Um, this one does come in a little tiny box, so it's got some seals, so let's go ahead and open those. This is just to prove to you guys I have not opened this at all yet. Have not looked at it, haven't done anything with it, so I'm going to go ahead and break these. Helps if you actually cut the tape. There we go. Alright, let's see what is in our box, shall we? Okay, so we have a little open me thing up here in the lid. I'll pop that out so you guys can see it. So we have this little open me. So let's open that and see what it is. It has a little Cricut seal on the back. So let's see what that has to say. It looks very similar to the ones that you get when you get like the Explore and the Maker. So we have the Let's Get Started Activate Your Product at Cricut.com slash setup. And this is pretty thick cardstock and then it has general information inside to get to know our mug press over here it shows you all of I'm sorry over here it shows you all the different buttons and stuff and what they do and then it just tells us to handle our mugs with care because they will be hot and then you have the warranty statement for your mug press so that's all that's in the open me package so I'm going to tip this so you guys can see what it looks like in the box it's completely like plastic sealed and then it has a little bit of like styrofoam around the bottom or like a, I don't know, a composite. And there's some at the top. So I'm going to go ahead and pull it out for you guys. That. So there's the little mug press. And then under the mug press, you do have the cord and the USB cord. So those are just under the mug press. So here is our little mug press. You guys can see a little bit better now. That's where the mug goes. And then this, let's see. So let's get this opened. I think I could probably just poke a hole here it is all unwrapped. You guys can see it a little bit better, a little less reflection. 
And then I'll show you guys what the bottom looks like. The bottom's got these little grippy feet on it, which is nice. All plastic. And then there's this little opening hole. That's how you grip the mug. That's how you grip the mug. Cool. So then it's got um, a little note on the power button here that says to get started, activate your product now at cricut.com slash setup. I will do that eventually. Um, I'm going to open the other press. That way they're opened at the same time. We can set this one up. Here's the other press. You can see it's a much larger box. Um, it, again, this one is about 15 pounds with all the packaging. That one was about nine pounds. So this one's a little bit heavier, not by much, but a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and open this again. Did not open this at all. I am opening it right here on camera. I'll link all of the stuff below for you guys so you can find it if you want to get either of these. This one looks really well packaged, which is good. This one comes with a user manual, a true user manual. Shows you all the pieces, parts. It's got some technical information, the voltage, things like that. That's something you want to definitely look into before using any kind of heat press is the voltage that it uses because some of them do require higher voltages. Then this one comes with some safety things over here and then we also have the different pressing times and temperatures over here because this one you can set to different times and temperatures based on your material. We have a cord, a big black cord. Nothing, again, nothing fancy, just a standard cord. There's the end that plugs in, it's covered in styrofoam, so we'll have to clean that off. We also got some screws and um, an extra two fuses here. We got those. Now I'm gonna get the press out. I'm gonna move this box out of the way. And here is our mug press. Now, the, again, it's well packaged. Um, I think both presses are well packaged. This one is pretty small. I mean, it's it's smaller than I thought it would be. It is bigger than the Cricut one, but it is all metal. Um, I don't see, other than the handle, I don't really see plastic on this other than the handle. But I'll let you know here in a second once I get it all out. The box is plastic, so the heating box, like this is where the, um, like your digital information is, is this outside casing is plastic, and this handle is plastic, but everything else seems to be metal. It feels pretty sturdy. I got two different kinds of mugs to test. So we have the Cricut brand, and then I got some off of Amazon. I'll link them below for you guys, but these are just some random mugs. These are 11 ounce from Amazon. You just see, they're just plain white mugs, nothing exciting. And then I haven't opened the Cricut ones yet, but let's see how those look. The Cricut ones are 12 ounce because that's all I could find. Uh, my store did not have the 15 ounce in stock. I tried to keep them pretty much the same size. That way it would be a much better comparison um, for the mugs and for the presses. So this is the 12 ounce Cricut mug. Now this will be easy to tell apart. The Cricut ones do have the Cricut logo on the bottom. They do feel nice. Um, I think both mugs feel nice, but I will say the Cricut one, which is gonna be this one, looks a little thicker in the ceramic part. So it's a little bit thicker, not much, to the point where like a normal person like just looking at it would not know the difference. But I can see that it's a little thicker. They both sound nice. They both feel very smooth and good quality. So I don't think that anything too different with the mugs. Honestly, they look fairly similar. The handles are almost identical. So you can see they're pretty much the same. And honestly, that one ounce difference, they look the same size. It has the orange indicator light, and that means that it is heating up. If you put your hand over this part, this circular part, you can feel it warming. So I'm gonna let that warm now. Remember, this part is always gonna be cool. So I'm gonna slide it out of the way really quick. That way we can do the mugs and get them ready. So just to show you, this is the non Cricut, and then we have the Cricut brand. I've wiped them both down with some alcohol just to make sure they're nice and clean. And we're going to use some Cricut heat tape for this just to keep everything really kosher. So I have two of the exact same designs cut out of infusible ink, and I'm going to put them on our mugs. When placing your designs on your mugs, you want to make sure that you're holding them down with heat tape. And you want to make sure that the designs are around the mug super, super tight. So you'll want to put heat tape all around the bottom rim of your mug as well as the top rim of your mug. 
This is really important to make sure that you get good contact with both of the heat press onto your material and the material onto your mug. Because of the way these products work, you need to have that good contact between the two surfaces to make sure that the color comes off and dyes your mug the way you need it to so that it looks nice and professional. Okay, that's pretty good with the tape. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring this back in. And again, it's not warm except for this section, like right in the center, it's, it's only warm here. So what you'll do is take your mug and you wanna put it face up and I'm using the Cricut one, just so you guys can see, I'm gonna start with the Cricut one. And what you'll do is you'll set it inside this little holder by holding onto the handle. And you wanna make sure that the handle, this part, is centered in the slot. And you can hold it and adjust it as you slide this closed. You're gonna push this down and close it. And you just can adjust as you go. You just wanna make sure that this handle stays really, really centered. And if you're unhappy with it once you've pressed it, you can unpress it again, but I think that's pretty good. All right, so what it's gonna do now, and it might be a little hard to see, so I'm gonna turn this off and see if you guys can see it better. There is a little light right here, and, I'll, and this light is gonna count down. So it, typically it says it takes about six minutes. This is supposedly optimized to work best with the infusible ink. Six minutes is a really long time, I think. Um, the other press will be interesting to see. The manual for the other press says that a ceramic mug should take 120 to 170 seconds. So I guess we'll wait and see what happens. I didn't catch it beeping, I'm sorry, but it beeps when it's done. You can see all the lights are flashing and then it beeps again apparently. So what I'm going to do now is release the cup and make sure you have some sort of heat resistant surface to put this on, whether it's a silicone mat or a pressing mat. Shh, calm yourself. So what you're gonna do is lift up this top flap. Now the handle should stay cold, so you can touch that, and all the white parts are cold, but the mug itself and the inside is hot, so be careful. So what we're gonna do is remove that. I'm gonna go ahead and set this down. We're gonna do the same thing that we did with the Cricut brand one, and we're gonna slide this in. I'm just gonna show you one more time. This is the off brand from Amazon. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna slide it in, carefully not to touch the innards. Make sure it's centered within the slat, slot thingy, and press. And again, you can adjust as you need to as you're pressing it closed until it gets too tight and then you can't adjust it anymore, but you can always reopen it and adjust it. Now I will say this um, seemed like it adjusted pretty easy to that mug, so that's good. I'm gonna go ahead and let this one heat and do its thing. This one is still cooling over on the side here, but we'll get them both out, we'll cool them both, and then I'll show you what they look like. Mug number two is done, so we're gonna go ahead and pull this up and pull our mug out. Again, being careful not to touch the sides. Now we are gonna to need to let these sit. I let these cool for about 15 minutes. They're good to go, nice and cool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the Cricut one just cause that's the one we did first. And I'm gonna peel the tape off. Um, and so here's our mug from Cricut. This is the Cricut brand. I'm gonna pop that off. Now I do have a little spot here it might have been a little too close to the handle because you can see it's not quite centered. So I do think this was a user error issue right there where there's like a little bit of a spot. That would be because it was too close to the handle, but like mm, it happens. And I do think it looks pretty nice. I did just see a spot that I missed weeding though. Oh no, it's okay, it's fine. Nobody will notice. There's a couple little spots that I missed weeding, but it still looks kind of cool actually. So now we'll come around and do this cup the same way. Now Now I'm gonna go ahead and peel this off. I mean, honestly, they look pretty much the same. I 
don't really see any difference other than like the spots that I missed weeding. Again, I was a little close to the handle, so I think that's something you need to really watch is right here where the handle piece is. You need to make sure that you're not super close to the handle um, because it does leave a little bit of like a shadowy, like not super pressed kind of look. For this test, we're gonna test sublimation prints. So I just printed this on my sublimation printer and I just need to cut it out. Normally I would use a paper trimmer, but I can't find mine. So I'm gonna have to use scissors, which is fine. I can't cut a great straight line, but it'll be fine. So you're gonna cut just along your edge. And just like how the Cricut gives you those little tabs, I'm gonna leave these edges and I'll trim them down once it's time to put it on my cup because I wanna have just a little bit of a tab so that I can put some tape on that edge. So I'm just gonna go ahead and trim this down. Now, keep in mind, these, unlike the um, ink, infusible ink sheets, don't have like transfer tape. So you'll need to use that heat tape to tape these down. Again, I'm gonna use the Cricut brand heat tape just so everything's very much the same between all of my tests. I'm gonna to try to keep everything the same as possible, which is why we're using the same design for the sublimation prints on all four cups that we are testing. So I just wanna keep everything really, really the same. So I'm gonna finish cutting the edges off of this, then we're gonna get them taped to the cups, and then I can show you guys it into the Cricut mug press, and then we'll do the other mug press. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the mug press on while we wait, let that warm up. So I'll get that out of the way. And we'll go ahead and we've got the two different mugs. I'll show you. We've got the Cricut and the off-brand mugs. You can tell because Cricut has the logo on the bottom. The off-brand ones, again, are from Amazon. So I'm going to go ahead and trim some of the edge off of this because we don't really need quite that much. And we can trim it down as we place it on to our cup. Now, when you do a sublimation print, if it has words on it, which this does, you need to make sure that you have mirrored your image. So you can do that in your printing software. So I'm just gonna wrap this for a sizing issue. Now I didn't size these perfectly. Um, this is the first time I've actually printed a mug size. So I'm sure they're gonna be a little short, which is fine, not the end of the world, but they look like they fit pretty good. So that's pretty even. That'll be okay. Now one way to tell, you can just look at, see where your print is. And I just try to get it kind of centered along where that mug um, handle is. And you can kind of slide it around until you're satisfied with where it's sitting. Now that the press is all heated up, we can put in our cup. So like I said, I'm gonna start with the Cricut mug first. And again, it's gonna be done the same way. You're gonna place it into the little round hole for the mugs. And you wanna make sure that your handle is centered. And then you press down on the little levery. You can kind of adjust it as you go. You do wanna be careful that nothing slides around. That's why you put a lot of tape on it. And you close. Now we're gonna let this thing do its thing, which takes about six minutes, but it just depends on the cup. There's the ding. So now you can release it by pulling up this plastic door. And remember the mug itself is hot, but not the handle. So go ahead and pick it up by the handle. You wanna be careful. And then set it on to a heat resistant surface, which I'm just using my pressing pillow. And same thing, I'll just show you guys, this is the off brand from Amazon. And I'm gonna slide that on into our little muggy holder. And again, make sure that your handle is centered. You'll see as you kind of close the door that your handle will move a little bit. So that's why you kind of need to adjust. So I'm gonna let this thing do its thing and we'll come back and pull it out. And then we'll let everything cool and see how it happens. This one should be ready in just a second. So I flipped it over so you could see this was the Cricut one. It's still pretty warm. I usually have been letting them sit about 10 minutes to cool down. Cause you want them to be cool. You don't want to burn your hands. It's a safety thing, of course, um, with these. But again, the, the mug handle is cool to the touch. So you can touch that. But I wouldn't recommend touching any of the main part of the mug. Now this again will give us a little ding when it's done. 
There's our little ding. All you got to do is lift up that little door over here and carefully pull out your mug. Again, only touching the handle. And there's the mug all finished. I'm going to flip this one upside down as well so you can see Cricut brand and the Amazon brand. Now, make sure to turn off your mug press when not in use. Um, I also do recommend always unplugging things like this just in case because you don't want it to turn on if somebody's messing around with it or if you have kids or something like that. Um, I also would recommend not storing this closed. I would recommend storing this open um, just because it's going to cause, you see how it like gets pressure? I feel like leaving it closed is just like leaving the heat press closed. You're going to wear out the um, springs or the mechanism that squeezes your cup. So I would recommend just storing this with the little door open. The mugs are cool, so we are ready to go. I'll start with the Cricut one just because that was the one I did first. So again, you do need to peel all of the tape. So I'll do that and speed it up. All right, so I'm gonna pull this one off again. This is the Cricut mug, just so you guys can see, Cricut mug. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this off. This is the sublimation print, printed from my sublimation printer at home, which is an Epson ET4700. Um, I know you guys are gonna ask, so it is the Epson. I love it, I'm super pleased with it. I didn't peel the tape off well enough over there. And I got a little piece of tape right on there, that's okay. Um, guys, this is gorgeous, look at that. Oh, it's so pretty. So, so far I don't see any flaws on this at all. I do have a little spot where like the paper was a little too tall, but that's okay because it looks fine. So I think this one looks really fantastic. The colors are super bright. Everything came out really, really nice. So now let's reveal, this is the Amazon brand. So we'll go ahead and do this one next. Now don't fret, you can see where it's kind of like ripped a little bit of the back of the paper. Don't worry, that's totally okay. It, it does that from time to time. It's just because the heat tape, when it gets warm, that adhesive gets a little extra sticky, but that's okay if it rips the back of the paper. It's already done pressing, so we don't have to worry about it. All right, let's reveal. Oops, if I can get the tape off. Wow, this one got messed up a little bit. Um, I think when I adjusted it, to move it a little bit, I think the paper might have slid. So we have a little bit of a blurry spot. That's what's called ghosting. Can you see how that house is super blurry? Um, that's like a ghosting on it and that was probably my fault. So again, user error, but the colors are beautiful. It really came out nice, but this one did get a little blurry. Again, I think it was more just user error on my fault than the press itself. So I would say so far, so good. The colors look very, very similar on the cups. I don't really see a lot of difference as far as color saturation for this goes. This heat press is from Amazon and this is the Butter Sub Press. I paid $139.99 for this press. I will link this below. So I'm just gonna tell you a couple things I noticed right off the bat. This press is mostly metal with the exception of the top of the handle and the box that goes around the heating element information center, if you will. Um, that is plastic, but I imagine a lot of what's inside is metal. Now, this can only fit 11, 12. I haven't tried other cup sizes, but from the reviews, it sounds like it really only does like 11 or 12 ounce mugs. Before you even turn it on, you do need to adjust your pressure. So if you're gonna do more than one or two sizes of mugs, this may not be a great option, but what you're gonna do is take your mug and slide it in to the little cup holder. And to adjust your pressure, you use this little knob here, which is why you wanna do it before you turn it on. And what you'll do is hold your mug and keep that handle centered just like you do on the Cricut one and press it down and make sure that you don't have any gapping around the sides. So you'll look at each side and you'll see if you have any kind of gapping. I can't really show you, I'm trying and it's not going, there you go. So you can see where the mug is sitting in here. It looks pretty good and secure. And then you'll wanna just double check and make sure it doesn't wiggle because that's a great way to check for any kind of gapping. So it's not gapped, we're good to go. So I'm gonna open that and take my mug out. Now to turn it on, there are some buttons here on the front and I will show those to you guys here in just a second. I've got our heat press plugged in. There's a little on off the switch right on the side. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch it on. And you'll see that now it's giving me some information. It's heating, 
you can do Celsius or Fahrenheit. Now I'm in America, so we're going to do uh, Fahrenheit. So I believe if I hit the OK button, it's going to give me my programming options. I'm going to turn off my light because I can't see the, there we go. Now I can see it. So 385 is where I've been pressing a lot of stuff, but according to the press, this one comes with a manual. So according to their manual, super helpful. I have to say, I like the little manual it comes with. They have a little heating guide in here. So for a ceramic mug, it says for 360 to 120 to 170 seconds. So what I'm gonna do is use the down arrow and just change it down to 360. Now I'm gonna follow their directions since we don't change anything on Cricut, I'll follow what they say. So then I'm gonna hit okay. And my programming too is gonna be how many seconds. So I'm going to turn this way up because it wants me to go to 100. It says up to 170. So let's do 150. That seems pretty good. And then programming three is just your Fahrenheit versus Celsius. So again, I don't know Celsius. So I'm going to let this heat up. And while that heats up, what we'll do, it looks like it's heating pretty quick, is apply the stuff to the mug that we need so that we can press them. So for comparison's sake, we are going to do a Amazon mug and a Cricut mug with the same designs on the same materials. So I'm using infusible ink. I have two of those. And then we're going to do two with the same sublimation pattern. That way we can really get a good look at what is what. And I'll make sure to mark the ones that we did with the Amazon press versus the ones that we did with the Cricut press. Now, I'm gonna slide this out of the way so that it's just a little out of the way, but it is. it does get pretty warm. I can feel the heat radiating off of it already. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply the images to our mugs. I do find actually this heating mat is super helpful. It doesn't let the mug roll around as much. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide this over. Um, I will say, so I'm gonna just touch because I'm curious as to what parts on this are warm. So I'm gonna touch very, very lightly. This is fully heated. I'm gonna touch all the parts super lightly just to see what's hot. This part is warm, not hot. This part is hot, I can tell you that, as is this outside portion also hot. This is gonna be hot. Not hot. Not hot, not hot, not hot. Not hot, the base is not. So really I think the only part on this that actually gets even the remotest bit warm is right here because the heating element is right under it. And then I wouldn't touch anything that is the silver parts or the insides. So what I'm gonna do is slide my mug in very gently. And remember we checked the tension already because we wanted to do that before the mug was press was on. And then we're just gonna press. Now hopefully the timer goes, but I don't know how to set the timer. We may need to check how to set the timer because I don't honestly know. There's got to be a way to do it. What that is, I don't know. Ah, okay. Once you put that down, you press enter. So it, it heated for a few more seconds. So I'll make sure to heat the other one for about 15, 20 seconds um, more than I did for this one. Our mug is done, so that is a really annoying alarm. Um, oh, okay, you have to hit okay to turn it off. So I released my mug. Now I'm not sure if the handle on this is gonna be cool, so I'm gonna check it. It's pretty cool, it's not like cold, but it is cool enough that I can like slide my mug out. So I'm gonna slide out my mug and set it to the side. Slide this bad boy back out of the way because I need to finish taping this mug up a little bit. And once we're done taping, we will heat this mug. So I'll pull this back in and we're gonna heat this one. Again, I will do this one for about 20 seconds more because I accidentally didn't understand how to turn on a timer. So I'm gonna try to slide. Mm -hmm. Slide this mug in. This one fits a little tighter. Not sure why. 
but it does. Hopefully it'll press. So again, I can touch over here to hold it down, but this one's really tight. Oh, this makes me nervous. I'm not liking I, this, this whole situation. So I'm gonna, again, wait about 20 seconds and hit enter because I did heat this one longer. So I just wanna make sure that I'm trying to do them the same. Now that I understand how to turn the timer on though, we should be okay. Turn the timer on. Okay, annoying alarm going off. So we're gonna go ahead and take that out. And again, very, very hard to open. So I'm gonna let this, I'm gonna check the handle. I don't wanna touch the handle right away because I'm just not confident that it's cool, but it is, it's cool. I'm gonna go ahead and slide that one out and I'm gonna set this one off to the side as well. And we'll leave this heating in the corner because I need to put on uh, sublimation ones for our next set of mugs. So we're gonna do the sublimation ones. I'll let you guys watch me do that in fast pace. Let's start with the Cricut mug with the sublimation. We're gonna slide it in, hold on to that handle, make sure it's centered, make sure it stays fairly centered. Just make sure you get that whole image in there to be pressed. Press that down and hit the enter button. We'll let that heat for 150 seconds. Okay, that one is done. So we're gonna go ahead and pull that one out. Again, handle, totally cool, so you can use the handle. And I'm gonna set that off over to the back with my Mac. So then this one is the off brand from Amazon. So we'll slide this one in. It's getting caught on a little piece of tape when it's sliding in. So you wanna be aware of that. You wanna make sure you tape these ones really well because they, um, they do tend to get caught a little bit on the edge while you're sliding it in. So I'm just gonna make sure all this is down. So for some reason it's still getting caught a little bit. There's not a lot of leeway for this, so if it's getting kind of hung up, it's you're gonna find out. So again, making sure the whole image is into the press. And press. Hit the enter and let it start counting. Okay, this one is done. So we'll go ahead and release and hit Enter, and we'll set this one off to the side to cool as well. The infusible ink mugs that we did with the Amazon Press are cool. So again, I'll flip them over so you guys can see. That's the Cricut one and the Amazon. So let's reveal Cricut first since we pressed that one first. Go ahead and peel the tape. I honestly think the worst part of like sublimation is the tape peeling. Some people love it. I think it's awful. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and get this tape all peeled and then we can reveal it. Okay, I've got all the tape off, so I'm gonna go ahead and pop this off. So I got most of the tape off. All right, so I will say there is some weird stuff at the bottom, but that is definitely user issue, not the press issue, at least I don't think. Um, this is because it's the handle is lifting the edge, but doesn't look bad. The color's good. It looks a bit more colorful than it did, um, than I think it would have. So there's that one. And then let's check out the Amazon cup for color. All right, got all the tape off. So I'm going to pop this off. So we do, again, have this rim at the bottom. It's the same as the Cricut one, a little less bright. But again, I can't be certain that that wasn't more so a me thing and less so a press thing. But what'll be the true test is what it looks like on the sublimation, because that'll tell us for sure about pressure down here in this lower rim. Um, 
I want to say it may be a press thing, but we'll find out. But the color on both looks really good. I don't see any discoloration like I did when I did the first press on the Cricut one, except for where the ink wasn't fully down. Okay, so now it's time to reveal the sublimation prints. So Amazon Cup and Cricut. And again, we pressed Cricut first, so I'm just going to peel Cricut first. Tape's peeled, so let's go ahead and reveal the design. Wow. So I think it was an infusible ink thing because the bottom of this mug looks fine. Like there's not ghosting on the bottom. So I do think that this was more of an infusible ink issue with that press. Um, so I would say don't use infusible ink or test it out and see um, like what the heat settings are because I just used a ceramic mug heat setting because I wanted to keep everything like very the same. So because the Cricut pressed the sublimation at the same setting that it pressed the um, infusible ink, I wanted to press this one the same way. Okay, we've got it peeled. Let's go ahead and take a look. Wow. Very bright, very, very nice. These honestly look pretty much the same. Like I don't see any real difference color wise. I don't see any real difference in the way they pressed. Again, this one is the Amazon mug and this one here is the Cricut mug. I see really no color difference, nothing like that. I do have a spot on this one right by where the handle was that wasn't fully taken, but again, it was pushed up a little bit by the handle, so I should have done a better job taping that. But again, it's a learning curve. But I think the colors look the same, so I would say that sublimation, definitely the way to go, especially if you have the Amazon press. I'm gonna get everything out. I'm gonna label the ones that I did with the Amazon press. I'm gonna put little A's on the bottom of them. That way we can tell the difference between the Amazon ones and the Cricut ones, and then we're gonna give you guys a whole overview. Now that we've pressed all eight mugs, I am ready to give you guys my thoughts, my reviews, pros and cons on both of these presses. So these four cups here were done with the Cricut mug press. I put a little C on the bottom so I knew for sure which ones were which. And then these four cups were pressed with the one from Amazon, which is the better sub brand. I have everything linked below for you guys. The cups I used, everything so that you guys can see exactly what materials I used. I did two with infusible ink with each press and then two with sublimation with each press. I did the same pattern with both and the same color with the infusible ink as well. That way everything was very the same so it was a little easier to compare. My printer that I use for sublimation is an Epson 4700 and I just used some, I believe it's Zyart, Zy something ink, I'll link it below. That way you get an idea of what I used for sublimation and then I just used Printer's Jack paper to print on. So if you want to check any of that stuff out, that's all linked for you guys too. Just want you guys to know, I definitely want to be completely transparent and share with you everything that was used. That way you guys can do your own digging and look at what I used. Now, there are a few pros and cons for both of these items. I don't think one is better over the other necessarily. I think it's just going to be what you want to do with it and what works best for you. Now, let's start with the Amazon press. The Amazon press is heavier at 15 pounds and it has a lot more metal in it. So that is definitely a pro, a pro for me because it does feel like it is better constructed. Um, this is a much larger machine as well. So depending on the space, that could be a con because it is pretty big and you do need a bit of space around it to work. And storing it's gonna be kind of a pain because this handle is really kind of in the way no matter which way you put it. It makes it extra tall or it makes it much wider. So that's something to think about is what kind of space you have to store it in. Another con for this machine is that it gets hot on the outside of this metal pressing point. And if you nick that with your hand, it is very, very warm. So that can be a little bit dangerous. But I've seen a couple other people who have this say, oh, you know, it gets hot. I need to use gloves to hold it down when I'm removing the heat. This one does not. This plate in front does not get hot. The sides here don't get hot. They get a little bit warm, but they don't get so warm that it would damage your hand. It's no warmer than just touching like something warm out of the dryer. It's not even hot. Um, so you can easily 
touch this machine. Like I said, the only part that gets hot is this plate right here. I touched everything else and nothing else was hot, but it does have a lot of radiant heat. So my room got really, really warm, really, really fast. So that's something to think about as well. The radiant heat on this is very strong. A pro for this machine is that you can buy other plate sizes for it. So this is for the 11 or 12 ounce mug size, but you can get a bunch of other mug size uh, plates for it because this plate is removable. However, you have to remove the plate if you want to do a different size and they're kind of expensive so that's something to think about as well. Whether you're just going to do one size mug or not because if you're only going to stick with one size this would be great. It's less expensive so that's definitely a pro um, price wise. Now another thing that I like about it is that this one has like a pressing foam inside and this doesn't move. This is attached to the pressing um, item so you guys can see how it's got the little red inside. Do you see the red inside? That's your foam that kind of keeps it from pressing. It's really nice. It's thick and it works really really well. The other kind of con for this is that you need to make sure that you adjust your pressure before you turn the press on because you don't want to put your cup in here when it's warm. You want to adjust your pressure when the machine is off. And I will say that adjusting the pressure was a little bit nerve wracking the first couple of times because you really need to squeeze it down and you feel like you're going to break the cup. Don't worry, as long as you're careful you won't, but it is a little bit intimidating. So that's another thing. This press is definitely a little more intimidating. The settings on it are great because you can set this to different times and temperatures and pressures, all sorts of things, which is a fantastic thing if you're using different products. I didn't set the I set the mm -hmm. I set this to what it said to use for sublimation to use the infusible ink because I wanted to keep everything very consistent between the two presses. So since we couldn't change anything on this and I had to press the sublimation at whatever this decided it was, I pressed this with the infusible ink with the same time and temperature that it suggested for sublimation just so that we could really get the idea of what it would do. Now, I will say that if you're going to use infusible ink with this, you'll want to up that time and temp because it didn't do so great as you guys will see. I'm going to show you guys up closes of the mugs, so don't worry. We're going to go over some pros and cons of showing you guys the mugs as well. But these are just machine pros and cons, and then I'll talk about why I liked it better for which mugs. So this machine, like I said, less expensive, but it is bigger, has more metal. It's a decent machine. I like it. It's good if you're going to do maybe one or two sizes of mugs, but it could get expensive if you want to add a lot of different plates. Now over to the Cricut machine. This one, my con for this one is the price. I think a lot of people know that $200 seems like a lot for a machine, especially a machine that really technically only does one thing. Another con to me with this is that it does feel kind of cheap. It's all plastic and it's not very heavy, which is also a pro because it's not heavy, but it just doesn't feel like it's sturdy, that it's meant to last. But again, I've only had it for a day. I'm sure it's nice, but it just doesn't feel like as sturdy and heavy as the Amazon. A pro to this though, is that it does take a bunch of different size mugs and I've seen people testing other cups in this and they do seem to work, and that's something that I will do in the future, but I wanted to just do the one standard size for this because otherwise this video would be insane. Another thing that I like about this machine is that it's pretty foolproof, especially if you're doing infusible ink. You literally press a button and let it go. You don't have to think about time, temp, pressure, all of those things. It does that for you. So if you are a crafter who doesn't like to get all complicated, this is a great machine for that. Now, a con was that I didn't like how when the infusible ink or the sublimation gassed off, it stained the inside of the machine. And I'm such a stickler for a clean, nice looking machine that it really, really bothers me. And I'm going to try to clean it off, but I don't think it's going to come off. I'm not a fan of that. And it did make my machine a little bit messy. It also ended up melting some of my infusible ink transfer sheet, which left a little brown spot and a little plastic behind on the inside here. And that was kind of a turn off to me. I didn't love that. 
Now I will say it does work really well. I think it's easy to use. The little plastic flap feels pretty sturdy. Um, I don't know that I love it, but I do think it feels fairly sturdy. The Cricut Monk Press also doesn't come with any really written out directions. That's always kind of been a complaint with Cricut is we don't get a lot of directions and that's okay. You can usually find them on their website but they don't still just give you a lot and I think it's kind of nice to be able to look at a quick sheet and for something like this where there's not a lot of directions needed, a little direction sheet would have been extra helpful. The fact that it's only one button is great. It's easy to use, so that's definitely a pro for me. So these are the two cups we did with the Cricut Mug Press with the infusible ink. I think they came out really, really nice. Um, this one is a little bit discolored over here on this side right here. This is where it melted the transfer tape that's attached to the um, infusible ink, but I think the color is pretty nice. It's almost a little bit too dark though in what I think it should be, and it's a little discolored down here at the bottom. It's a little darker than it is at the top, but all things considered, it came out really, really nice, but that is what the Cricut Mug Press was made for. It was infusible ink. This is the Amazon mug with the Cricut infusible ink, and this one came out really, really, really nice. The color is great. It came out really good. It's only got a little bit of a light spot right here where the mug was a little too close, like the transfer's too close to the... Um, handle. But otherwise, this one I think came out great. So if you're looking for infusible ink, you could use an off-brand Amazon mug and it works perfectly, or you can use the Cricut brand and I think it works fine as well. These two mugs are the sublimation mugs that we did with our Cricut mug press. I will say I'm not happy with the way the Amazon one came out. It's got a lot of blurriness and ghosting on it. But this was, I believe, more so my fault than the press's fault because the top is fine, but the bottom is where I've got some issues, and I think I just didn't tape it down really well. But one thing I will say is that I feel like the Cricut brand mug press presses for too long and too hot, possibly, for sublimation because they're not as um, clear as I think the ones from the Amazon press, but Honestly, you're not really going to notice unless you held them up together because it's still really clear. It's still really nice. The color is great. I think it came out good. I think if you're going to do sublimation and only sublimation, the Cricut Mug Press may not really be the one for you because I do think it presses too hot for too long for a sublimation. But if you want to do multiple cup sizes, the Cricut Mug Press could still work. These two mugs were done with the Amazon Press the Better Sub Press with infusible ink, and I will say that the results are not fantastic. So this one is the off-brand mug, and this one is the Cricut brand mug. You can see along the bottom of both mugs, we have a lot of fading. It looks cool, but that's not what we want, and the colors aren't as bright. We also have a lot of fading here along that edge because it wasn't quite in the press right but I do think it works but I will say that you need to up your heat and your time when doing these mugs with the Amazon press that's something to keep in mind I did them both at the same time as I did the sublimation just to keep everything very similar and I just think that this probably if you're going to be using infusible ink you'll want to play around with it a little bit more or if infusible ink is your thing the Cricut mug press is probably the way to go for you. These are the mugs that were done with sublimation with the Amazon press and the colors came out really nice they're very very clear they both look very very similar the Amazon mug is just a slight bit brighter than the Cricut mug so that's something to keep in mind, but I will say that this is a much clearer image and a much brighter image than I got with the Cricut Mug Press. Again, I think the Cricut Mug Press possibly presses just a little too long and too hot, and I want to thank my friend for that one because I wouldn't have thought of that, but you can see that it came out really, really colorful on both mugs. This one is the Amazon mug, and this one is our Cricut mug, so I think they both worked really well. I do have a little bit of a lighter shade here because again, it wasn't pressed on the mug fully when I put it in. So again, this is user error and you're gonna get user error no matter what you do. 
But I think that this one, if you are strictly sublimation and only want to do sublimation and you're not doing a ton of different sizes, the Amazon press for less money would be the way to go. I hope you guys enjoyed this review and demonstration with the Better Sub mug press and the Cricut mug press. Again, each have their own place and I'm really pleased with both of them. Check out the links down below for where to get everything that I used in this video. I hope you all have a fantastic day and get a chance to make your own fun crafts. Have a great day and happy crafting.